Yeah, so I would like to tell you about how a group of graduate students has collaborated at the University of Colorado to really organize some incredible science outreach and hopefully give you an idea of how you could do this at a different university. So who are we? Um, we are the Evolution Outreach Committee. We call ourselves EOC. And this is a group that is graduate founded and run. So it's a group of graduate students. It was started in 2005. And really our mission is to improve the public understanding of evolution and then also science outreach in general. So a little bit about how we organize this group of graduate students. So in general, we have a graduate student chair or in the current case, chairs. And these graduate students are just more motivated and generally in charge of the organization of the group at large. Um, and this group is not that big. So we average about 15 members, but it can be anywhere from five to 20, really. So the size can vary a lot depending on the interest and on your department. And we usually have monthly meetings and we have a bunch of events that we put on. So some of these events are annual events that we do every year, we can kind of plan for. And then we also have new projects that we take on each year that we may only do once. And the great format, what's great about this format is that these projects and events are led by individuals or small groups, but are really made possible by everyone. So this is a committee of graduate students that can sort of make these outreach events a reality. So I just wanna tell you about some of the events that we do each year at the University of Colorado, hopefully give you some ideas of maybe some outreach events you could do other places, and then tell you a little bit more about why this format is such a good format for graduate students in particular, and hopefully something that other departments would maybe wanna take on. Um, so what you're seeing here is some curriculum that we wrote. So this is what we call an evolution connections box. Um, and we wrote these boxes to accompany each lab in the general biology lab manual. So this general biology um, course at the university has about 1,000 students, and it's a prerequisite for lots of majors. So we get a lot of students taking this course, and it may be their only biology course that they're ever gonna take at the university. And while this course touches on evolution, it's not a focus. And so we saw this as an opportunity to really reach students and give them sort of a framework for thinking about evolution and apply content um, when they may not get that in any other course. So um, each of these boxes, I'll show you another one here on plant evolution, is at the front of the lab and it really offers a chance to think about the content in that lab in an evolutionary framework. So it kind of gives them a chance to see it um, and think about it in a way that we would when we think about evolution. Um, and here's another one on plant or on um, stream adaptation. And we are, are currently trying to actually expand these boxes to other introductory biology courses. So this is one of our projects that we've um, done and are sort of re, uh, coming back to and hoping to expand. So another event that we do every year is a Darwin Day event on February 12th, which is Darwin's birthday. And this is a great way that we try to reach out to students on campus that aren't science majors and may not really think about evolution on a day-to-day -day basis. And we take over a public space that gets a lot of traffic. There's a coffee shop there, and it's a lot of traffic for non-science majors. So it's in a non-science building. And um, we figured out how to project on a wall similar to this, and we play Planet Earth throughout the day. Um, and we have a series of posters that we try to engage the public with. So just to show you a couple more, here's a tree of life. When it's bigger, there's an arrow that shows where you are on that tree. And we have fun evolution facts that we put up. And then we also hang um, blank posters next to these facts and invite students to write their own facts or pose questions. And we try to have um, EOC members sort of interacting with students by these posters. But what's great about this event is that you don't actually need anyone there. It can sort of be um, something that students can just interact with on their own. And this is an event we're also currently trying to expand and maybe do more with. Um, one of the, I think, funnest events that we do is this Museum Family Day. So um, this is an outreach event that's been happening for three years at the University of Colorado, and we do this in collaboration with the um, Campus Field Museum. And um, so the, the museum has family days once a month where they put on events on a Saturday for families and kids in the community to come to, and they've been kind enough to give one of these events to us. 
So um, what this is is an evolution-themed family day that we've taken over, and the members of EOC create stations and activities. So different people take on um, creating different activities and stations for the kids to do, and then everyone volunteers for the day to make this happen. And it's really fun, and I just want to point out some of the fun activities we've come up with, just a couple. Um, so I came up with an activity with sexual selection called What is with all the pretty feathers? Um, where students really, uh, these kids in the community, everywhere from age two to age 12, um, really engage with this question of how is sexual selection different from natural selection? So how do things like big antlers and feathers help you avoid predators? Wouldn't it be better to be camouflaged? And then we talk about sexual selection. And this is a great um, example of how you can incorporate your own research into outreach. So I study sexual selection. Um, and it's, it's a great way to engage kid, kids in these questions. Another uh, station that we came up with was a matching memory game with um, relatedness compared to convergent evolution. So we have traits and animals are either closely related or they're distantly related, but they look the same. And so it really helps kids start to think about how evolution actually works and they get to play this fun game. Um, one of the kids' favorite stations is a craft station where they look at these different habitats and then build animals out of toilet paper tubes <laughs> that are adapted to living in one of these four habitats and they have to think about what kind of traits those animals would need to survive in these habitats. Um, on a similar theme, Kit, we also had another station about noses, um, where kids looked at pictures of all the different kinds of cool noses, thought about what those noses allowed that animal to do, how they were well adapted, and then got to make their own nose, which is always fun. Um, yeah, and then our largest event every year is the annual uh, teaching workshop, where um, this is definitely sort of our biggest outreach event, and it's one of the first ones that this group took on. And it's a day-long workshop where we help public school teachers better teach uh, topics like evolution and climate change in the classroom. And Helen McCreary, who's going to talk right after me, is actually focused on this workshop. So you're going to hear a lot more about it. And uh, one piece that we're trying to um, put out there to kind of reach a larger audience outside of Colorado is um, the EOC website. So we have a website that we're currently trying to overhaul. Um, and this is where we put upcoming outreach events, and hopefully it's going to be a great source for online resources. So we have um, lesson plans from the family day, as well as from the workshop that we're hoping to put on this website uh, for people to be able to access. Um, and in the future, this is hopefully going to be a place where we're going to put a series of short videos. So we're hoping this is sort of our newest project that this uh, committee is taking on. And graduate students are hoping to make either animations or short videos on concepts and evolution that can be used in classrooms and also um, about our own research. So hopefully this can be an avenue where we can um, do outreach sort of related to what we actually study. So I just want to spend some time talking about the strengths of this committee format. So this is what we've done at CU, but this is really a, a great format to use in other places. Um, so I'm going to put up this word, and I know it's used too often, right, this word synergy, but in this case it's actually a great word to use. So um, it's really true. So if each of us in this committee were to go out and try to do our own outreach projects, um, it's much less effective than all of us getting together and making these projects happen as a group, right? So um, there's, we can accomplish a lot more as a group than we can alone. And this uh, committee format also involves grad students who may not quite have their act together to actually go out and do their own outreach. So sometimes getting an outreach project started takes a lot of organization, takes a lot of effort. Um, there's a sort of strong activation energy there for thinking about chemistry to get that happening. Um, but in a group, what's great about EOC is that we have some students who are more involved, but then we also have students who can just show up the day of and volunteer and make great outreach happen, and it's low sort of effort on their part as far as all they have to do is show up, right? So it's a great way to sort of get your um, department involved in outreach, especially people who maybe wouldn't on their own. And one of the best things I love about this committee format is that the group really makes ideas possible. So the museum day was actually my idea, and I came to the committee three years ago and said, hey, I really want to do this outreach with kids. And if I had had to tackle that on my own, it would have been really hard to come up with all those stations and to make it happen. It would have taken a ton of effort. I probably wouldn't have been able to do it um, while being a full-time you know, PhD student. But I took it to the committee. We had a great time. Everybody designed a station, and it happened. And now it's happened for three years, and it's highly successful. So um, I think it's really a way to make ideas 
um, possible. And I'll hi highlight this again, it's less work overall, so we get a higher outcome, and it's not so overwhelming for graduate students to try and do this. The other thing that's great about it is follow through. So um, outreach is something that we know we should be doing and we're generally excited about it, but sometimes it's hard to actually take those ideas and make them happen. And when you have a group of your peers and you have um, sort of this uh, place where you know that other people are interested in it, you can bring these ideas, but then there's more follow through and these ideas actually happen, which I think is a great strength of the group format. The last thing is, is that it's really fun. So doing outreach, I think, is generally fun, but doing outreach with your peers and other grad students who are excited about it makes it really fun, right? So um, in general, EOC is productive and we're effective, but we also have a ton of fun. So I just want to talk a second about how you could make your own EOC. So um, our committee does a lot of outreach at CU, but this is something that it's actually not that hard and that you could easily start at some place like Nebraska or any other um, committee. So it only takes a few excited grad students. So while we have 15 members, we really have a core group of about five to eight that actually make things happen. So you could do this with relatively few students who are interested in outreach. And I would really encourage you to start small. So start with some small outreach event that's easy to do, kind of get your feet wet, see how it goes, and then you can add more. And that's what we've done. So EOC is now 10 years old, and we, every year we've kind of added new things, and we now do a broad range of outreach, but we started small. Um, and I just want to point this out for the scientists in the room, right? We all should be doing outreach. It's like other talks have mentioned, it's something that we, we feel like we should do. Um, but uh, and this idea of broader impact, so if you want grants, you know you should be doing this. And so this group format offers the best of both worlds. You get a lot of great outreach that you can you know, put on your CV, put for broader impacts, and it's more effective and more efficient and a lot more fun. So we all should be doing it anyway, so let's just get together and do a better job, and that's really the way that we should be thinking about this. And I think what's great about this conference that I want to encourage is that um, these, out, these grad student committees, um, at least in EOC, have had a great collaboration with the Field Museum, with the public schools, with all these other groups, and I think this room is a great place to start those collaborations, so graduate students should reach out um, to public schools and whatnot, and if you're from one of those other groups, like, reach out to graduate students, because they need to be doing outreach anyway. So with that, I'd like to thank the committee and my other co-chair, Helen McCurry, who you're going to hear from next, um, the former co-chair, Sierra, and uh, especially Matt for putting this great um, conference on, and I'll take any questions.